everyone, this is your mentor Enchantress and this is the third week of our Sepeter class. Today, I will be discussing the basics of rigging using Maya. Um, I have here on my scene, I have Maya opened already. I have here on my scene the dress that I created during the first week of our Sepeter class. You will not be able to find the tutorial video in my playlist because this the tutorial for the dress was discussed only or exclusively with my mentees only so i'm so sorry for those who are not my mentees the tutorial for the dress is not available publicly however i'm going to use this dress to do the rigging work and show you the basic rigging tools that you can use in maya so that you will be able to perform your uh, the rigging work correctly so here, the, the last lesson that we discuss is about this dress is how to do the UV map. So after you do the UV mapping, you can also proceed to do the, the ambient occlusion mapping and the normal map if you know how to do that. But uh, after you did the UV mapping, you have to go to the UV editor and then make sure that you select all the UV shells here. You can select it using this option or you can also do the UV shell selection option. So there you have to select it and then you have to click the camera option here at the top and then um, let me reset it so you can see the default settings. So there. Under the file name, you have to browse, click browse, and then make sure that you are putting it in the folder where you want your UV map to be saved. So there, I am going to put it here and then name it Dress UV. And then under the image format, you have to set it to PNG. And then size should be 512 by 512. And then there, you don't have to change any of the other settings. You just need to change this settings that I showed you right now and then once you do that click apply and close and after you save the UV map it will show show up like this so this is the UV map and uh, you can use this as guide on how you can design your item so here for the top UV you can like add text here or patterns on your skirt or whatever design that you would like your items to have so there, um, after you do UV mapping, normal mapping, ambient occlusion mapping, and now uh, you finish creating your 3D model or your 3D item, then now you can proceed to doing the rigging work. So why is rigging is important or what is rigging in the first place? So rigging, you do this so that uh, your item will properly adapt to the movement of the avatar. So basically, you're um, binding the item that you created so that it will follow the movement of the joints of the avatar. And um, I know that like a few months ago, before Sepeto did like the major update with their guidelines, I heard from some creator that they were actually able to uh, submit items without rigging work, which really surprised me because ever since I started, being a 3D creator for Zepeto. I have never skipped rigging work since I always check the guide all the time whenever I create 3D items. I just follow all the steps that they provided here. Everything is here. Make sure that as a 3D creator, you always check the guide and you follow what is written here. It is very important that you follow the guides here because if you miss a single step, then that will cause your item to be rejected with the reason incomplete. So if you see your item being rejected and then the reason is incomplete, most likely you miss a part here that they already provided in the guide. The guide is here for us to follow, not to ignore. So there, you have to really check this out. And then um, you, we, we need to go to rigging so we can see all the requirements for the rigging work so that you can uh, properly do it. And then let's go back here. So after you do the UV mapping and all the um, mapping works that uh, you need to do, you can now combine this all together so that you can create just one single object that we will be uh, rigging. Select all of this and then go to mesh, combine, and then... Uh, make sure you delete history. You can actually, sorry, you can actually um, delete history here, but I prefer to see the the option name here so I can make sure that I'm clicking the right option. But this is the shortcut for delete history. And then this is the center pivot. You need to do that and then freeze transformation. Once you do that, you are now ready to do the rigging work. So the next step that you need to do is to Im import the creator base set. So 
I'm going to do that. Creator Base Set. Uh, you can download this under the 3D guide. So still, um, we're using the guide. We always need to use this all the time. So under the getting started page, you, you can download it here. So make sure that you are using the updated version. If you have any other version other than this, it will not work. This is the uh, creator base set that will make your items suit or fit all body types. So make sure that you're using this. So you have to click this plus sign so you can expand it. And then under this, uh, the creator base set group, you can see mask and then the hips. So these are two Im important objects that you will need to use to rigging work. So for the mask, this is actually the mask that has the skin weight value that we need to transfer to our item so that our item will follow the movement of the avatar without any issue. So if you go to mask and then go to rigging here, uh, you have to switch to rigging when you do rigging work. And then you go to paint skin. Let me hide the dress. You will see that the mask contains all this. Uh, let me reset this. You can see that this the mask con already contains all the skin weight information. Uh, that is the black and white coloring on your avatar or the mask. So it has all this skin weight information that we need for to do the rigging work. However, if you would like to create or to do rigging work efficiently, I suggest you go to uh, gradient and then check the use color ramp option this option will show the skin weight in rainbow colors as you can see here this is a color ramp and we will need to use this so that we can determine how much weight vertex or a component has so we will need to use this as a guide so when we do the, the skin weight painting later so white means that it has one or 100 percent weight value of the joint applied to it so if you see a white color when you turn this on the color ramp uh, let me go to hair like something like this a white color so that means that this specific portion of the avatar or the mass will have the 100% uh, influence of that joint whenever that joint uh, moves it will follow so there and then the next um, the next color is red so it means that it will have like around 90% influence and then orange it will have most likely around 80 to 70% yellow 60 to 50 and then green 40 to 30 and then um, blue light blue and blue uh, around 20 to 10 or 5% influence so there and then black color means that there's no influence at all so it will help us in determine which part of the item uh, we need to put the influence on based on the influence that is showing here on the mask so that's why it's important that we uh, use the creator base set especially the updated one since it has all the scale skin weight so there and then the hips this is the skeleton of your body so you if you want to show the hips through the mask you have to click this on because if you have this turned up it will not 3d show you have to click or activate this option so you can see the joint so hips is the base joint of our skeleton this is the skeleton so hips is the base joint because all the other joints are connected to it so it's whenever you do bind skin work you need to always include the hips and the hip skill joints because these two joints are non-negotiable it always needs to be include included when we rig our item even if you are rigging like maybe a watch or a bracelet here or a necklace here or um, what else or a bag or shoes you have to include the hips and hip scale joint because if you do not do that you will not be able to submit it in Sepeto Studio I'm pretty sure it will get rejected and if you do not include this the other all the other joints will not be included as well since this is the main joint all the other joints here down are connected to this main joint I'm gonna show you my method of binding the skin or the hips to the item so that it will follow the avatar movements I saw with the other creators they usually select only the joint that will affect the item whenever they do bind skin they just select the hips and then the hip skill and then all the other joints that is inside the item when you look at it here in the viewport so what are the joints that are inside our item so let me hide that so this joint right so the neck uh, and then the upper arm joints and then the chest the uh, 
pelvis, the hips joint, and then the upper arm joints. Those are the joints that are included in our items. Most of the other creators, um, they just select all of those joints. So you have to like highlight them here under the outliner box. Make sure that you're selecting all the joint that will have influence on your item. And they, they just do this. So And also make sure that you always select the scale joints. For example, you select the neck, the neck joint here you have to look for the scale joint why because that's the that's how you can ensure that your item will fit all body types if you miss the scale joint or you do not um, add the scale joint influence on your item it will not fit any other body types other than the default avatar body types so make sure that the scale joints are always selected and we are gonna use that to paint the skin weight on our item so there you have to select all those joints this is just an example but I do I use a different method in binding skin so this is normally what other creators do well it's up to you whichever technique will work best for you uh, I will do the techniques that always work for me so for example this one so um, you will select this and then of course the upper leg joint make sure to include the scale joint do not miss any scale joint you will have a problem when you when you rig it or when you modify the skin later so there they they always they usually do this so the other creators um there make sure the hip skill is included and then click the dress and then go to skin bind skin to bind it okay so sorry i had to re-record this part because there's a lot of static background noise um, from this part when I first recorded it. But there, um, what I'm seeing is that the preferred method of most creators is by selecting only the specific joints that will affect their items and then binding it to the item that they created. So if you do that, for example, I'm going to select specific joints here that will be included in my item. So make sure that you are including the scale joints scale joints are very important to make sure that your item will fit all body type and then i'm gonna select dress and then go to rigging let me re uh, reset it again there so there um they do bind skin this way and then make sure that selected joint is set up here to do the bind skin option however in my case i do not do that method why because i am just trying to avoid uh, missing a specific joint that may affect my item when I do the rigging work. In my case, what I always do is uh, I just select the entire hips and then I select the dress. So make sure that you select the hips first and then the dress and then go to skin, bind skin, and then you set this to joint hierarchy. And then you don't have to change anything here. This are the ideal option. And then here, allow multiple bind poses. Um, this works best if you are binding multiple objects to a single skeleton. In our case, since we are binding the only the dress to our to the skeleton, it's okay to uncheck that. So you have to uncheck that. And then here, max influences. If you check or you go to the rigging guide, number one. So the skin maximum influences are fixed at four. Four is the best weight value in Unity. What does it mean? So if you set this to four, you have to set this to four to follow that requirement. When we do rigging work, we will always do or uh, use the vertex selection. We will no, not really use the edge selection or the face. Vertex selection is the ideal option to, to do the skin weight painting with our items. All of each of the vertices on your item, they will have a maximum of four joints that will influence them. So for example, this one. So what are the joints that are near, nearest this vertex? So this joint, this joint, this one, and maybe this one too or this one, right? But um, the maximum influence that it can get or follow is up to four only. So uh, in that way, we can keep the clothes moving smoothly along with the body. We can avoid it being messy. We don't want our clothes to look messy when the avatar moves or like they're going all over, all around the place. So we want to set the max influence to four to ensure that uh, the uh, clothes or the items will move smoothly along with the body of the avatar. That's why we need to set it to four. And then here, you have to make sure that the maintain max influences is checked so that we can keep the uh, four 
Max influences and then um, uncheck this one remove unused in influences we don't need it we only need this one colorize skeleton and then once I selected that um, I'll go back to hips and then dress and then apply and close and then once you do that if you can notice earlier the uh, the skeleton is colored dark blue, right? But now it turned into this colorful skeleton. So that means that your divine skin option is successful. The the influence of this joint are activated or binded to the item that we are rigging. So there, you have completed the bind skin option. Okay, so now that we did that, um, the next thing that we need to do is to copy the skin weight of the mask to the dress. So as I shown earlier, mask has um, skin weight added by Zepeto here. So we need to transfer the skin weight to our dress or our items to make sure that our item will follow the movement of our of the body of the avatar. So how do you do that? In my case, I always use the setting. So I click on mask first and then dress and then go to skin, then go to copy skin weight. Let me reset it so you can see the settings there. So the default setting is um, surface association is set as closest point on surface. So it's okay. We need to leave it like that. Under the influence association, I always use name. Why? Because if I choose the closest joint or other option here, it will mess up the skin weight that will be transferred to my avatar so let me show you what will happen so there I will set it to name and then I'll open paint skin weight and then I will try the other option here so I will actually try the option that Zepeto um, provided here in their um, YouTube tutorial if you watch this you may have tried this uh, settings for the copy skin weight option so let me try that one so I can show you the difference I'm gonna choose the settings that is shown here in this tutorial. So if you can see this, this is the Sepeto official tutorial. Um, it says here that they choose this one, but under the influence association, they choose the closest joint and then influence association to one to one. So I'm gonna do that. Closest joint, one to one. So there, copy and let's see the skin weight. Uh, let me hide the mask so I can focus on dress. I will compare it so there right there and then if you are if you already know how to rig items you will see that um, the difference so there let me hide the mess here and then there this is the one that I copied using the name option so I'm gonna go to hips as you can see the hips does not have any skin weight at all so it's black right and the hip skill has weight which is what I, I need because uh, as I mentioned we need the skill joints to have influence over our body so that it will follow the body types in Sepeto. It will suit all the body types. However, when I use the other option, the closest to, uh, the closest point and the one-to-one, -one, the hips joint has influence on the item. Instead of the hip scale, the hip scale has zero. The hips has influence to it, which will cause this item to not uh, fit all body types since it will just adapt to the default Sepeto body. It will not adapt to the other body types. When you go to the a guide here says here that the hips sh joint should have zero weight on your item so you want to make sure that the hips joint has zero or it's black when you check it on the paint skin weight tool you need to keep it a zero so there that's why I don't really use that option I just stick with name since this uh, this is the one that um, works for me uh, the name association it transferred weight from the mess to the dress it retained the the skin weight name so it did not change the hip scale weight to the hips unlike what happened to the other option it transferred the hip scale weight to the hips which will mess up our item so there that's why i uh, i choose that option so we've already completed the copy skin weight and if your item is um a top and then it's if your item is a fitted clothing like for example it's just the tube top and then pants here you can stop at this point. The rigging is basically finished by this point since fitted clothing require 
no to little skin weight modification so there if you created like a fitted clothing it's okay you can just proceed with the masking work and then submit your item in Sabeto Studio but however we have dress here so we will need to make some modification with the skin weight since the skin weight that we transferred looks like this so it does not look like a dress right it, it's like the legs are uh, this part is of course separated to create the legs and but however the item that we are rigging is like a cylindrical type or shape right so it's not the same form or shape with the mask so for this reason we will be doing the skin weight modification or the skin weight painting now how do you do that i will uh, give you or i will uh, show you the tools that i use to uh, perform skin weight painting in maya so there i i just need to hide the mask so i can work on the item so if you can see here uh, as i mentioned you need we need to use the color ramp right so the skin weight showing on our item should look like this the color should look like this the skin weight if you see like a black skin weight on one portion and then beside it it's like red that means that the skin weight is not evenly distributed we need it to look like this so how you do you do that go to dress make sure that you're you select the dress and then you will see this so as you can see this is not evenly distributed right so we need to paint it or to modify the skin weight so that it will be it will be evenly distributed so green should be beside blue so there should be a blue portion here so you can paint it as you can see um i was able to paint it by going to the joint that you want to paint weight onto the item and then make sure that the paint operation is replaced and then you can set the value here you can set it to one if you want like the maximum value so it will turn white if you paint it but you can also turn it to like 0.5 so it will be blue when you paint it like so something like that or you can also use the vertex selection that i mentioned earlier so vertex selection painting this is the method that works best for me so i just basically like select specific vertices that does not have smooth skin and then i just paint them maybe i'll use pipe and then flood them there this uh, this vertex has, has no influence earlier but now i blood it with five percent of the hip skill value it turned into dark blue color so that's how i paint skin weight and then um for you to be able to paint the skin weight um for the top part we don't really need to paint the skin weight since this is okay actually uh, if you move the joints here it will move as intended for all fitted um piece of clothing it does not require skin modification that much since it will have the almost perfect skin weight it will follow the skin weight of the mass there so it's moving as intended but for this part the skirt it does not have the the skin weight that you want for our items so that it will look smooth when um, the avatar moves so let me show you an example so I'm gonna move it here and there you see that the skirt does not look really smooth like there's like there right so there's like harsh lines here and we're trying to avoid that and this one too the back faces are protruding uh, through the skirt so we are trying to avoid that um, if you want uh, the dress to go back to the bind, bind folds you can just go to skin and then go to bind folds so it will go back to the original position and you can just move the joint so that you can see how your item will look like when the avatar move so let me try this so there we need to fix that so how do you fix that you can fix that by painting the skin weight manually so for dresses or, or any item that has skirt we always need to do this that's why it's easier to create items or clothes that has pants pants is much easier to rig than dresses or skirts skirts require a lot of work when it comes to rigging so that's why i try to avoid dresses as much as possible so now i'm gonna show you how to paint it uh by the way i will not really complete the entire rigging work it will uh, i'm trying to keep this video short i just need to show you how to do the basic rigging in maya and how to modify the skin weight but i don't think i will be able to complete the rigging work here it will take a really long time to do that so i'll just sh uh, show you an example 
uh, on how to do the uh, skin weight painting so there usually what i do is i hide the mask first of course i need to focus on the skirt and then when you do the skin weight painting you have to start always start to the joint that you want to paint um, that has an evenly distributed um, weight such as this one right it's uneven uh, yellow and then black so we need to make sure that we color this part green and then blue so that it will be evenly distributed or it it will look smooth when the avatar moves so you have to look for the joint which is farthest from the hips joint and work on that first so in our case this joint is the farthest and then this is the next one right so we need to work on this one first so i'm gonna do that um since this is a two-layer skirt i want to uh, paint the skin weight on the second layer skirt so i'm gonna select the dress right click anywhere empty and then go to uv se uv shell selection <laughs> then i'll se select this part here and then go to the isolate select there so that you can focus on this part here and now using vertex selection you can go ahead and paint the parts that needs to be smoothened so there um so that you can fix this part and make the skin weight smooth make sure that the back part is also selected there are two options here that i always use so the first one is the hammer skin weight so hammer skin weight um what does it does this assigns selected vertices with the same weight values as their neighboring vertices resulting in smoother deformation this is a quick way to fix selected vertices that have weights causing undesirable deformation on the mesh so uh, what it does is it will divide the skin weight here based on the neighboring skin weight so this one and this one so it will consider the value here and it will apply the, the value resulting in that division to this um to this part here so there you see that it evenly distributed the weight here based on the skin weight of this um the neighboring vertices so that's what it does so you can use the hammer skin weight tool uh, the other option that i use is the smooth option so i go to smooth make sure the opacity is uh one and then just flood this part here so it will smoothen out this portion it will smoothen out the uh, the skin weight of this portion um let me fix the, this other part mm, no it not it's not selecting it so there uh, i'm gonna fix this part maybe i'll do smooth instead so there so this is how you should do your rigging work so you need to do that on the back part as well so make sure that you selected the vertices that you want to fix the skin weight um, then you can either you can change to hammer skin weight or smooth depending on what will give you the best result uh, i don't like the result of the hammer tool i will choose the smooth tool and then there and then you can just adjust it by doing the vertex selection um let me redo this part smooth there and then also this part here you can do that or let's let's try the smooth option or maybe paint will work but i don't like it then you can just keep on smoothing it until it will give you the desired um, skin weight value and then you do that on the other side as well so go to um, the that joint so we are on the upper leg twist L scale so go to the upper right so there you also need to do that here so you have to uh, use the hammer skin weight and the smooth skin weight option so that you can make sure that the skin weight is properly or evenly distributed so i'm just gonna select this part here
So that's how you modify the skin weight. So you need to keep doing this. You need to keep smoothing the skin weight until the um, the skirt part is not deforming. So you need to do that. So uh, until you get the desired look of your item. So let me try this now. So I focus on this part, right? So let's try to move it with the mask. So you need to go to object selection so you can select the bone and then try to move it. So there, if you can see it's it's actually smoother than before, right? There's no more jagged line here. It's not that jagged, but there's still back faces here. So so you still need to paint the skin weight of this one. Maybe I'll uh, do the paint option or the hammer. Or the, maybe it tr let's try smooth. It did not work. So you need to keep on modifying or painting the skin weight until you get the there. So there, we have fixed that part. And then this one, uh, let's try painting this one. Make sure that you're also selecting the back parts of that um, mesh. So it will have... Not really, it doesn't look good. I'm gonna try hammering this down. There. So this is how you can modify or um, paint your skin weight. Maybe not paint, I'll do the smooth because it's going like if you do smooth it will like lift up that part so if you do paint it will do this however we're trying to avoid this part here we don't want um, this part to be inside the skin so yeah you have to deselect the other parts I'll, I'll deselect this part Maybe I did that too much. So there, you can just keep on hammering skin weight and smoothing them so that it will not deform as much as it does right now. So that's basically how you do the skin weight painting. And as I mentioned, I will not really like do the entire process. It will take like a really long time. I don't want to create a really long video, but at least you will have an idea how you do rigging, right? So you just uh, you just need to really know what will uh, what bind skin option you need to select when you do bind uh, the bind skin option, and also the copy skin weight option. So those are the important things that you need to know at this point. You have to keep doing this on all the parts of the skirt that has influence. So basically that's like the pelvis scale, the hip scale, and the upper leg scale, the scale joints, upper leg twist, and upper leg scale. You have to do it on all those scale. But yeah, you have to use the hammer skin weight and the smooth skin weight option. Then let me go back to the... Uh, bind, bind. So there, that's how you rig your items for, for dresses. So you already know all the tools. You just need to do the, or practice on your end. And um, it's okay if you take a long time to do the rigging because I myself, I actually take like hours. Rigging usually takes hours, but it depends on the item that you're rigging. For long dresses, it will take, of course, it will take much longer time. That's how you do the rigging. And then once you finish rigging, and just basically um, go to masking so i'm gonna give you like an example uh let's let's pretend that i finished rigging at this point and if you proceed to masking you have to sorry you have to unbind this mask um from the skin because it has skin weight so you we have to unbind it so unbind and then um, let me just 
move them here outside and then next thing that you need to do is to go to delete history by the way when whenever you do rigging work while you are doing rigging work do not delete history it will delete all the rigging work that you've already done and you don't want to start all over again so as much as possible you just save the scene there so that you can save the progress that you've made with rigging and then uh, you can delete by type only do not um, do this the alt by type uh, select mass after you unbind it select mass delete by type and then delete history and then non deformer 2 and make sure this is not locked here unlock it there make sure this is a center pivot and freeze transformation and then there you can do now do the masking so how do you do the masking work so this is the uh, work that we do before we export your item into a fbx file so go to mask go to modeling go to um, mesh display and then select this um, one so the box you have to you have to click this box so you can get the settings and then you have to paint it white first there you flood it so it will be painted white and then after that you have to select all the portions of the body that will be hidden inside your clothes so uh, let me select that for example this um, I'll just uns I'll just deselect uh, you can use symmetry to this uh, to select this component then make sure that you selected all the parts of the body that will be hidden inside your clothes so up to here once you do that go to wireframe mode there and then isolate select there and then now select the mass and then click here go back to shaded view there and then um, you have to change it to black so it should be zero here all the values and then plot it there you that's how you can do masking work so masking it will all the black uh, the portion of the mask that is painted black it will be transparent in unity and in Zepeto app so that since uh, it's hidden inside the clothes you don't really need it visible right so you need to make it transparent so that no skin will be um, showing through the clothes and also if you modify the skin um, this part the the waist part it's uh, thinner or like smaller than the mask you have you want to make sure that you do masking around this part so that this mask will not show up so only the skin of your item will show up so there so once you did that you this is when you finish rigging and then you went to masking and then the next step is to uh, select all this make sure that you set the mask to mask shd the the shader name so you won't be confused when you uh, convert it in unity select the, the dress the mask and the hips before you export this into Cipeto or fx file okay let me unhide the dress so there as you can notice the skeleton that has no influence on our item has turned back to dark blue because it has no influence only the joints that has influence on our item will be colored so there is a guideline in Cepeto that says that the item that we should submit in Cepeto Studio must have a maximum of 100 uh, joints. So rigging required. So it's really required to do the rigging there. So the problem is that this the hips um, the hips joints it has over 100 so you how do you determine how much joint there is in your item or in your scene you go to windows go to general editors and then script editor and then you have to copy paste this command that i have here i'm gonna put it in the description box once you copy paste it click play it will show you the number of joints in the scene so there's 104 and the requirement is to have maximum 100 that means you cannot go over 100 so how do you fix that because if you submit it this as is in Cepedo studio you will get an error message that um, something like bone criteria does not meet the requirement something like that and we're trying to avoid error messages right so we want to make sure that our item will be 
accepted instead of studio so how do you do that you have to delete all the joints that has no influence so only the joint like this uh, go to object mode this has no influence this has no influence this one has no influence too so i'll delete that and also the part of the head but i need the head included in my item because it will affect the neck area here so you can also select it here so under spine chest neck head i will only delete this eye scale this is the eye joint of the nose then i will delete that so i have the head and the neck scale remaining so there so make sure that you delete um that you will keep the head the neck um the pelvis and the hip scale joints you cannot delete those okay <laughs> those are important you you need to make sure that you're not deleting the joints that are placed there in hierarchy so we need the head because if you delete like the head or uh maybe the the pelvis or yeah you you accidentally delete this main joints here um it will create like an error in unity and you will not be able to submit it in Sepeto studio so um, you make sure that you keep those those joints you can delete all the other joints such as this but this one from the head neck chest pelvis and hips you cannot delete this these are like the main joints okay there once you do that let's see now what's the number of the joints uh, available here in our scene so again copy paste this and click play and there you see that we only have 41 joints so it's within the requirement so now that's the time that you can export it in fpx select every, the, all the three items and then export selection and name it um whatever you, name you want it to be and then there you have your fpx file this is a file that you can uh, use in unity so that you can do the conversion which we will be discussing in the next week or our last week of separator class so there that's the process of how to rig and how to do masking work with your item and that's it for today's tutorial i know this is kind of long and i try to make it short by providing you like the basic information that you need to know but i hope that you learned something today and thank you so much for watching this video enjoy the rest of your day goodbye